All right, so now we are back for another question on stock valuation. And here we're going to be looking at constant growth. So keep the golden growth model or the constant growth model in mind. You are considering an investment in Keller Corp stock, which is expected to pay a dividend of $2 a share at the end of the year. So that means D1, which they've given you in your clue, is equal to $2 and has a beta of 0 0.9. Now, this is important because we're going to be falling back on some of our basic finance here. The risk-free rate is 5.6% and the market risk premium is equal to 6%. Keller currently sells for $25 a share. We're going to go ahead and stick that under here. So P0 is equal to $25. And its dividend is expected to grow at some constant rate G. So we don't know what that constant rate is. Assuming that the market is in equilibrium, what does the market believe will be the stock price at the end of three years? We don't know what the growth rate is. and We don't know what the price at the end of three years is going to be. So let's go ahead and take this step by step. So first and foremost, where we have beta and RF and MRP or market risk premium, that means that we're automatically dealing with the capital asset pricing model. So basically, if you recall, the capital asset pricing model says that the return on any asset is going to be equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta times RM minus RF, where essentially RM minus RF represent the market risk premium. Okay, now in this case, we have a beta, we have a risk-free rate, and we have a market risk premium. So we're going to go ahead and plug in those values to calculate our required rate of return. So RF is 5.6%, 0 0.056, plus a beta of 0 0.9 and an MRP of 0 0.06. There you go. We're going to go ahead and plug that into a calculator and see what we get. Remember order of operations, so 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.06, and we add into that 0 0.056, and we get 0 0.11 or 11%. This is our required rate of return on the stock. So we're going to go ahead and add that over here into our known values. Okay. When we have a required rate of return, we don't know what a growth rate is, but we have the price and the D1. We can go ahead and shuffle our formula to calculate that particular growth rate. So if P0 equals to D1 divided by R minus G, we are going to go ahead and shift the R minus G to the left-hand side and the P0 to the right-hand side. That means that our equation is going to look sort of like this. D1 divided by P0. All right. And now we want to isolate the G because this is a negative over here. We want to make it a positive. So we're going to shift it to the other side. We're going to go ahead and have a G there. And the D1 divided by P0 is a positive over here. We're going to take it to the other side. That becomes a negative. So R minus D1 divided by P0. And that is what our growth rate is going to be. We're going to go ahead and use this formula to calculate our constant growth rate. And so R minus D1 divided by P0, that's what we want to calculate here. So R is equal to 11%, 0 0.11, minus D1 is $2, and P0 is $25 there. All right, plugging that into a calculator. Once again, remembering order of operations, 2 divided by 25 is 0 0.08. We want to take um, 0 0.11 minus that answer, and we get just one moment, did an error right there. Two over 25, let's try that one more time. We wanna add that, here you go, 0 0.11, and we get a difference of 0 0.03 or a 3% constant growth rate. And this is another input that we needed. So our growth rate is equal to 3%. Now the final Part of the puzzle is P3, and now we know to calculate P3, we need a D4. Let's go ahead and extend our constant growth rate formula. We know that P0 equals to D1, to, uh, equals to D1 divided by R minus G. That also means that P3 is going to be equal to D4 divided by R minus G. And so D4 is something that we'll have to calculate. Let's go ahead and do that over here. We have our D1. We're going to calculate for D4. Let's scroll up a little bit. Okay. D1 equals to $2. D2 is going to be equal to D1 times 1 plus G, which is 
2 times 1.03. And that becomes 2.06. D3 equals to D2 times 1 plus G. That's 2.06 times 1.03. Plugging that into a calculator, we get 2.12. D4 is going to be equal to D3 times 1 plus G which is 2.12 times 1.03. That's 2.18. Now remember, because we are dealing with a constant growth, that there was an easier way to get to this. Let's go ahead and show that to you. We can jump from D1 equals to 2 all the way to D4 by simply using compound interest. That'd be 2 times 1.03 to the power of so from one to four, we're going to take three jumps. That's two, three, and four. So that's three compoundings on top of that. You'd still get 2.18. You can use either way. Mathematically, you'll come to the same conclusion. So we're going to use that 2.18 as our D4 over here. 2.18. We already have our R of 11%. We have our constant growth of 3%. And so that's 2.18 divided by 0 0.08. And we get 27.25. That means P3 or the value of this stock at the end of three years is going to be equal to 27.25. If you have any further questions, don't forget to comment below. Please like and subscribe for further updates. Thank you.